morning. Welcome to Ainsley News. It's Friday the 23rd of October. It's the end of the week, almost into the month as well. Well, Australia joins the money printing party with a bang. We finally joined in. Against all odds, our Aussie dollar has held firm for some time now around the 70 cent mark. It doesn't seem that long ago that the majority of economists were calling for a much lower AUD, into the 50s even, but that just hasn't eventuated. Why is that? Because in a global mix of currencies, our central bank's reluctance to open the printing floodgates like nearly all others have, has made our currency comparatively more attractive in terms of yield than most others. We reported earlier this week the minutes from the last RBA meeting where they made it clear that they would let inflation run hot before easing rather than the traditional but repeatedly premature method of preemptively moving or holding at the first sign. What those minutes also revealed was that they had been briefed on the budget before their subsequent announcement to hold rates steady, arguably to give the budget clean air. Those same minutes make it abundantly clear, however, that they will likely drop rates and start QE, or quantitative easing, shortly. The obvious takeaway is that they could see the fiscal stimulus measures announced in the budget and taking us into the trillion dollar deficit club would not suffice to drag the economy out of this recession. Westpac's summary from the minutes were as follows. The board will cut the cash rate, the three-year bond target, and the rate on the term funding facility from 0.25% to 0.1%. In addition, it will reduce the rate on surplus exchange settlement account balances from 0.1% to 0.01%. We expect the board will announce the intention to purchase bonds issued by BOT Australian government and semi-government authorities in the 5-10 to year maturity range. However, we do not expect a specific quantity target for these purchases or an explicit yield target beyond these existing 3-year target. Already we are struck by the next shown chart just released by Crescat that shows us second only to Canada and also off a lower base and almost identical to the Fed in terms of growth in central bank assets or newly created bonds to fund deficits. Here's that chart here. Go Canada. (laughs) Wow. But there's Australia there with that purple line, if you can zoom in on that one. So just to reiterate, their asset is a debt instrument sold to print more money. It's actually worth reading the RBA minutes where they discuss how and why. We also add some commentary within it as well. Here we go. Members recognise that substantial and coordinated and unprecedented easing of fiscal and monetary policy in Australia was helping to sustain the economy through the current period. Members noted that public sector balance sheets in Australia were strong, which allowed for the provision of continued support, with the Australian Government budget for 2020-21 to to be announced that evening. The Secretary to the Australian Treasury briefed members on the main features of the budget. Members considered that fiscal and monetary support would be required for some time, given the outlook for the economy and the prospect of high unemployment. Comment here, it was clear to them that the fiscal stimulus announced wasn't going to cut it. Moving on. The Board discussed the case for additional monetary easing to support jobs and the overall economy. As in previous meetings, members discussed the options of reducing the targets for the cash rate and the three-year yield towards zero, without going negative. And now comment on that for now. (laughs) And buying government funds further along the yield curve. These options could have the effect of further easing financial conditions in Australia. We think they're essentially talking about yield curve control, as we've discussed previously. Those links are in the comments. In considering the case for further monetary measures, members discuss monetary policy, developments abroad and their implications for financial conditions in Australia through the yield curve and the exchange rate. Members noted that the larger balance sheet expansions by other central banks relative to the Reserve Bank, and commenting clearly only in quantum, not percentage, per the chart we shown previously, was contributing to lower sovereign yields in most other advanced economies than in Australia. Members discussed the implications for this for the Australian dollar exchange rate. We also discussed that before, other central banks are forcing lower yields on their sovereign bonds, and hence our higher yielding bonds look more attractive, and so forcing up the AUD when they want a lower AUD to make us more globally competitive. Lower AUD, higher price of gold in AUD for gold holders. 
Members also discussed how much traction further monetary easing might obtain in terms of better economic outcomes. They recognised that some parts of the transmission of easier monetary policy had been impaired as a result of the restrictions on activity in parts of the economy. However, as the economy opens up, members considered it reasonable to expect that further monetary easing could gain more traction than had been the case earlier. Now, I comment the main game of monetary stimulus is to entice more borrowing, to buy off more stuff and expand the economy. That doesn't work when everyone hunkers down and tries to pay off their debt. Their hope is, as things appear to improve and they facilitate all this cheap debt, that this will turn around. Remember, we already have the second highest private debt rate in the world. It also means you aren't getting any interest on cash deposits, further enticing you to spend on investments that do have capital or gain potential like gold. And that's the perfect segue to their next sentence, which is, Members also considered that the effect of lower interest rates on the community confidence and on those people who rely on interest income. This is ultimately their dilemma. Zero rates really hurt retirees and the like, living off cash deposits, hoping for some interest. Real rates are negative, and so they are literally going backwards. That's why gold thrives in negative real rate territory. Members discussed the possible effect of further monetary easing on financial stability. A further easing would help to reduce financial st stability risks by strengthening the economy and private sector balance sheets, therefore lowering the number of non-performing loans. Commentary on that. Sorry, but this appears a little disingenuous. Lowering rates on all that debt we lured you into so that you don't become a zombie company unable to even service your debt cost. Sounds a bit rough. This benefit would need to be weighed against any additional risks as investors search for yield in the low interest rate environment, including those resulting from higher leverage and higher asset prices. Referring to Exhibit A, as we've discussed previously with the NASDAQ, piling money into shares with sky-high P to E valuations using cheap margin lending, or for Aussies, in an overvalued environment. Particularly in the housing market, we've also said that these are the same effect as we've detailed previously. On balance, the board might, or the board thought it was likely that there were greater financial stability benefits from a stronger economy, while acknowledging that risks in asset markets had to be closely monitored. Uh, commentary on that, we know we are creating asset bu bubbles, chasing inflation in the broader economy, but we will do it anyway, because the government is not doing enough stimulus themselves. The chart we showed previous is before all of this stimulus happens. Here we go, Australia. Let's see what happens next. Well, thanks for tuning in for news today, for our end of week news. Remember ainsleybullion.com.au for all things physical, for gold and silver. Ainsley Wealth for all things cryptocurrency. You can buy and swap and exchange of your crypto to gold and gold to crypto. And if you want to check out our gold and silver backed cryptocurrency built by Ainsley, check out goldsilverstandard.com. We'll catch you Monday. Enjoy your weekend. <laughs>